Rare Adventures of Biggles. Major Marling's insistence, Biggles has allowed Pat to fly him and Lala back to Shansi in the new amphibian. As the plane crosses the straits between Dolphin Island and the mainland, the occupants are puzzled to see dozens of native craft at sea and all approaching Victoria Point. Pat is tempted to approach the rebel headquarters to check on this activity, but she is deterred by the sight of three enemy fighters coming from the south. I suppose there's no way in which we can fight them. There's a machine gun in the locker, but there's no mounting for it. You've never handled a gun against a plane, have you? Dozens of times from the ground, but never from another machine. I did a spot of flying when I was younger, but I'm afraid I've had no experience in aerial combat. Then it'd be stupid for us to fight. We'll have to run for it. Yes, but can you do that? Has this crater turn of speed? No, it's slow, old thing, and those fighters are fast. Too fast. Once they see us, they'll pounce on us in no time. If I could gain height and climb above them, I'd... May I make a suggestion? Oh, hello, Lala. You've come forward to be in the excitement, have you? I saw the enemy planes approaching and decided to join you. We're at present flying much lower than they, aren't we? Yes. I dropped height to look at those boats. They'd be about 8,000 feet above us. And to gain a safe height above them, we should have to cross directly through their field of vision. That's so. And surely there is more safety for us in being below them. For a time, perhaps. They haven't started to drop, so they obviously haven't seen us yet. But when they come up close... By that time, I suggest we be on the water. What's that? You want us to put down? Immediately ahead of us is the coast, the mouth of a small river. It is the same place in which we hid the launch during the raid last night. Uh, could you land there before the other planes are overhead? Yes. Yes, I think I could. They may see us, of course, but... If there's a chance of escape, let's take it. I don't mind being killed in a fair fight. But I refuse to be shot down like an animal. We'll do it. Lala, there's a machine gun in the locker. Have it ready. If they see us, they'll strafe us when we're done. We must be prepared for them. They're coming. But they're still high. If they start to dive, it'll be the finish of us. One machine gun isn't much protection. They're overhead. Now we're in full view. They only need to look to the ground. No! No, they're not going to. They're passing on. They haven't checked their height at all. They can't have seen us. It doesn't look like it. I think we're safe. Yes, I'm sure we are. They aren't likely to look back now. Phew. If they'd been interested in anything on the ground or the sea, they couldn't have missed us. We'd better chalk this up as our lucky day. You know, we wouldn't have come out of that alive if the pilots of those planes had seen us. Yes, I'm well aware of that. For the last ten minutes, I've been mentally saying goodbye to Shanksy. Well, if we're safe now, I suppose we might as well be on our way. <laughs> Only this time, we'll keep well clear of Victoria Point. You know, I don't think we should keep clear of it. There's something strange going on there. It may be very useful for us to know what it is. You're not suggesting we fly over the place after this brush, are you? No. Flying would be too dangerous. But didn't you say that this was the landing place from which you raided the village, Lala? Yes. It's only a few miles through the jungle, perhaps an hour's walk. Then we'll make a grand reconnaissance. Watch that, watch that. You're, you're simply asking for trouble. Oh, I do not agree. I could guide her to the village while you stayed here to guard the plane, Father. The danger will not be great. Of course it won't. I'm not suggesting we go into the village, but skirt it in the jungle. Try to see what's going on. It'll only take us a couple of hours. Now, look here, young lady. I heard Bigglesworth's instructions to you. He was explicit that you should fly us to Shanksy, or as close to it as you can land, and then return immediately to your base. You've um, a plain load of rubber to take south, don't forget. Beagles may be annoyed at my being late. But he'll forgive me if I take back information. News of the rebels' activities may be of far more value than a few tons of rubber. I'll move the plane inshore, and then you can show me the way to Victoria Point, Lala.
Your men are doing a remarkable job, Lyde. This hold will be full before dark. I have told them we must leave before there is another attack on the island. Now that we have won the Sumatran, my men are not anxious that you should fall again into the hands of the enemy. No, neither am I, by Joe. The Sumatran may be the difference between the success and failure of this mission. I doubt if we could have possibly moved the rubber without her. Are you satisfied with the progress, General Labigo? Yes, most. I was checking on the stockpile before coming aboard. When you're fully loaded, there'll be only about 600 tons to move. Now, even if we have to call off the operation tomorrow, I feel we've done a reasonable job. But you have no intention of calling it off? No fear. I was sent out here to clear all the rubber from Dolphin Island. And since then, there's been added marling stock. I don't intend to leave the area until every ounce has been moved. I hope your intention can be realized. But I see many difficulties before the task is complete, my friend. Yes, yes, chance is the snag, of course. If that's still in rebel hands, I may have to recast my views. But one more trip in the Sumatran will finish the pile here. And I can't see that anything will stand in the way of that. Have you forgotten fire attack? No, 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 not by any means. But we've given him such a thrashing lately, and I think it'll be a week or two before he gives any more trouble. Of course, there's always the possibility... Do not neglect the possibility. Firetak is an egotist. He will know that his reputation has fallen because of our successes. That will make him bitter, and will give him a determination to save face by destroying us. He has an Asiatic pickles. Do not think of him as you would... A European enemy. Yeah, well, there isn't much we can do except wait for him to move and then try to counter it. But I can't see that he'll strike before we move your rubber. The chance is a different matter, of course. Miss Kendall should return soon, should she not? Yes, in about another half hour or hour at the most. She will tell us the situation at Chansey, and then I suggest you make plans to fit that situation. If all the rubber is to be moved, my supplies and those of Major Marling, I feel it must be done quickly. Otherwise, my friend, your mission may never be completed. I dear, that's good advice, Lyle. I'll remember it. As soon as Pat comes back, I'll decide what changes are needed. How much further have we to go? Well, less than a mile now. I'm sorry I miscalculated the time, but of course it was night when we travelled the distance before. It's much more difficult in the heat of the day. I didn't want to take too long about it. We're so close it'd be silly to go back now. What do you expect to find when we reach the village? I've no idea. But there's some unusual activity there. All those boats wouldn't be heading for it for nothing. And does this man fire attack? He is determined on success for his rebellion. And unfortunately, so many of the simple natives feel he'll bring them a new order. Quiet, Lala, listen. Others approaching the village. It's quite a large band of men. And they're coming from behind us. Slip off the path. If we hide in the jungle, we'll be able to watch them go past. And what is the purpose of this? If we increase our pace, they will not overtake us. We may learn something from them. The undergrowth's thick over here. Make a good hiding place. Quickly, they aren't far away. They won't see us here. Now listen carefully as they pass. You speak their language, they may be able to you may be able to hear what they're doing. Quiet, they're coming. There are about twenty of them. They're all armed. Did you pick up anything from their talk? Oh, very little. They were too far from us. But from the way they were dressed and the arms they carry, I should say they're a group of fire tax guerrillas. The rebels who raid loyal settlements in the jungle country. And they're heading for Victoria Point, too. Come on, Lala, we must find what's going on now. There are more of them coming. We'll have to hurry. We outstrip the last crowd, all right. Oh, but now it is different. There's the village ahead of us. This time we must hide again. Very well, behind that clump of lianas. This is the third party we've struck coming this way. What's it all about? Oh, I shall try again to pick up their speech. But it is difficult unless I'm actually talking with them. Ah, there must be quite a crowd of them. 
quite a crowd of strangers in the village. I wonder if you had been noticed of if you... Of course. With my dark skin, I'm often taken for a native. And my clothes are certainly ragged and disreputable. They'd never pick you. As this party comes past, slip in amongst them. You'll never be noticed. Find out, find out what you can and then come back to me here. I shall do it. Now we must stop talking. They come. Good luck, Lala. Miss Kendall! Miss Kendall, where are you? Here I am. Oh, thank goodness you're safe. I've been worried ever since you left. For my part in it was easy. But I have learned of plans which will make it great difficulty for you and your friends. What is it? What are they planning? Fire attack has sent a call to every bandit force under his command. They are to report to Victoria Point immediately. He has also called in every native boat that is available. When they're all assembled, he plans to attack Dolphin Island with a force that will need an army to repel it. <laughs> Lies warning to Biggles was right. Can Biggles move the remaining rubber in time? Will he be forced to withstand this tremendous attack? Listen to the exciting developments in the next chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles. <laughs> Adventures of Biggles. <laughs> Pat and Lala have made their way on foot to Victoria Point to investigate the sudden activity of native craft on the coast. As they push through the jungle, they find that the activity is not confined to the sea. There are parties of natives converging on the settlement from inland, too. Lala joins one of these groups and returns to Pat with serious news. Fayatak is determined to avenge his defeats. He has sent a call to all the rebel guerrillas and to all native craft to report at once to Victoria Point so that the strongest possible attack may be launched against Dolphin Island. I didn't think there were many of the rebels left. We must have cut them about horribly in the fights we've had. Yeah, that is so. But we've only fought the troops which fire attack coals to his headquarters. Most of the rebel activity is conducted by these small bands of guerrillas operating against plantations and loyal villages. There are thousands of them. Did you hear when the attacks to take place? Oh, that will be decided by the arrival of the troops. Those we have seen today are of the bands which operate in this vicinity. There are others which must come from a hundred miles away. Fireturk intends to wait until the strongest possible force is assembled. A hundred miles? It'll take those men several days to reach here. The attack can't take place for a while. That's not so bad. You don't seem to realize. There may be a thousand men, there'll be hundreds of cabangs, the native boats, and there'll be three naval ships to give them protection. Your friends are brave and good fighters, but they cannot withstand an assault of that size. I'm not being complacent about the danger, Lala, but... We shall have a few days to work out our plan of campaign. Well, what can you do? Beagles will do something. I'm glad we checked on this. If he has adequate warning, he'll be ready. I don't know what he'll do, but he'll make it hot for those rebels. Beagles is an amazing man. He'll need to be amazing. However, this is a most dangerous place for us to discuss it. There may be more of the rebels passing through at any moment. Shall we return to the aeroplane? A full-scale attack, eh? Hmm, well, that sounds serious. It is, Father. This time, Fire Attack swears he will not fail. But we'll have a breather for a few days. That may make a tremendous difference to us. Fire Attack has apparently sent messages to all his outlying bands, and it'll be quite a while before some of them reach here. Miss Kendall is optimistic. She feels the inspector will devise some means of defeating the attack. I have faith in Biggles, that's all. That's a good fellow. But I'm hanged if we can beat off the entire rebel army. Start up the plane, young lady. Take us back to Dolphin Island. What about Shansi? The Shansi trip is off. 
Bigglesworth will need every available man when the moment comes. And Valor and I won't uh, add much strength, but uh, we will be two more bodies. I don't think you should go back. Now, look here, Miss Kendall. If Biggles needs you, he'll send for you. And besides, what'll happen to your own people if you continue to stay away from them? Isn't that your idea in returning to Shanxi? Well, yes, yes. I, I've been worried about our villagers and workmen. They've always relied on Lalor and me. If the rebels have withdrawn from the property, your people will be wondering what they should do. And if it's still occupied, well, they'll want a leader to help them throw out Firetark's men. You'll be letting them down if you don't go to them now. I think we should go to Shanxi, Father. There's no one to guide them. Even Malong is still sick and wounded at Dolphin Island. All right, all right. But you'll take my message back to Bigglesworth with you. If he needs us, he's to send word immediately. In the meantime, we'll go to Shanxi and see what's happening there. That was the ground we cleared for an airstrip. That open patch by the river. There aren't any planes there now. Well, they must have cleared off as soon as the floodwaters receded. Then the rebels have abandoned the place. Good. Well, it's too early to assume that yet. They may have taken the planes away because of the danger of further flooding. Bank round so that we can have a good view of the bungalow. There are a few people about. They seem very interested in us. I can't tell if they're my folk or not from this height. Uh, do you think it'll be safe to drop lower? We'll have to risk it. If we're to find out. Look at the jetty. Those boats are strangers. They're kabangs, aren't they? Yes, but none of the natives own boats. Try a little closer. There's a crowd of men down there, too. I don't know whether they're coming or leaving. There don't seem to be any other kites about, so we'll risk flying low over them. That group is very busy with something. Great Scott, lift the plane quickly. They're mounting a machine gun. We should be out of range now. Yeah, just as well I saw them. Yes, there they go. Oh, those bullets won't hurt us now, thank goodness. But they'll keep us high. I'm afraid we daren't make any further investigation, Major. It'll only need one bullet in the right spot to bring us down. Uh, do we need to investigate further? Uh, it seems my hope that they'll, they'll clear out with more, with more pure optimism. Uh, Shanxi's still in rebel hands. But why are the boats there? I don't know, but we'll find out eventually. If you put down the river a mile or two from here, Lara and I will go on our way and you can get back to the island. No. I'm not leaving you till I know exactly what's going on. We'll put down on the river, but we'll continue the investigation on foot. You are a very obstinate young woman, Miss Kendall. <laughs> very. Now, where's the best landing place for us? Well, the bungalow isn't far from here. The first time Bigglesworth called, he, he moored in the same place. All right. You can be my guide again, Lala. No, no, no. Wait a minute, Miss Kendall. This is my property. And if you think I'm going to stay quietly by this plane while you and Lala... <laughs> Papa, you have always preached to me the necessity for discipline. Uh, now you yourself must learn to obey orders. <laughs> I'm sorry, Major. I didn't mean to be bossy. But Lala and I can move so much more quickly than you. If your legs weren't hurt... No, I know, I know. I'm just an old crock. Very well, my dear. You go ahead and I'll look after the plane. But for heaven's sake, don't let anything happen to you. If you don't return safely to Dolphin Island, Bigglesworth will never forgive me. Now, what on earth's the matter, old trout? Why are you burbling back and forth like a caged belly lion? Jolly old rubber shift's working swimmingly, isn't it? It's not the rubber I'm worrying about. It's Pat. She went off to Shantzi about three hours ago. I don't know what could have happened to her. Shantzi is still in enemy hands, isn't it? We don't know. She took Marling and Lala back to find out. I didn't like the idea, but 
Like a fool, I let them bully me into it. Sizzling sausages. If those enemy fighters are stooging around, the old gosling won't have a chance. Is she carrying any arms? Yes, there's a machine gun in the locker, but neither Marling nor Lala have had any experience in aerial fighting, so I wouldn't be much use to them. I don't like the sound of it, Biggles. If she isn't back soon, it'll be dark, and if she meets up with any of Firetuck's roughnecks... I told her to fly straight to Shansi, drop the Marlings, and then come back. She'd have been here over an hour ago if anything had gone to plan. There's nothing else for an old bean. We'll have to tootle after the old darling forthwith. They haven't started loading our kites yet, so Algy and I can pinch one of them and ooze across to the mainland, toot belly sweet. Uh, it's no use you blokes going. Neither of you have been to Shanzi. If you're caught by the dark, it could be very tricky. Ginger and Tug should be here soon. How about one of us going across with Jin? No, 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 no. I agree with Bertie. We'd better act at once. I'll go with him and you can look after the base. Roger. Well, there's nothing else on the programme except the rubber, is there? No, just keep it moving, old boy. Have your kite loaded and put the natives to work on Tugs and Gingers as soon as they come in. Anyway, I hope we'll be back then in a couple of hours. Well, that, if I may say so, old sausage, will all depend on Patricia. The tricks that old darling gets up to sometimes rock us, Lissies. And we take some rocking, by Jove. There's the bungalow. You can see it through the trees. But look at the jetty. The boats have all gone. And the men, too. There doesn't seem to be anyone about. Yes. Yes, there's a man coming out of the house. An old fellow. It's Ahmed, our cook. Ahmed! Ahmed! It is I, Lala. Be careful. They may hear you in the house. You are. You are. I not see you. Where you come? Here, Where? here, oh. in the edge of the jungle. But do not call loudly. You'll be heard. Oh, no one here, Tuan. Oh, Tuan. We think you're dead. That is not time to talk of that now. You say no one will hear. What do you mean? House empty. Rebel go little time. Only Ahmad here. They've gone? Yeah, Tuan, they go. Many days Ahmad watch from trees. See boats come in morning. <laughs> All rebel go home, Victoria Point. Go little time. Of course. Fire talks called them back to be part of the invasion force. And Shansi is ours again. Oh, this is wonderful. My father will be so happy. Uh, quickly, Miss Kendall, come quickly, and we shall tell him this wonderful news. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but don't burst with happiness. You won't be able to tell your father a thing if you smile as broadly as that. Oh, you do not know my father. He has shown nothing, but his heart has been breaking since he lost Chancey. It is his life. When he hears that it is once more his... Lala, this is the arm of the river where we left the plane, isn't it? Yes, it's by the old jetty. The plane? Miss Kendall, the plane is not there. And neither is your father. I'm sorry, Lala, but he must have struck trouble while we were away. Both of them rush to the river's edge, but there's no sign of the amphibian. What has happened during their absence? Have the rebels really evacuated Shansi? Don't miss the thrills in the next chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles. Adventures of Biggles. When Pat and Lala push through the jungle to Shansi, they find that the rebels have gone. The boats they saw from the air left fully loaded for Victoria Point a short time before. Joyfully, they hurry back to the inlet where they left the plane, eager to tell Marling the good news. But when they arrive there, the bay is empty. Neither the plane nor Marling is to be seen. But, but this is where we left them. Where can they be? The obvious thought is the rebels. Surely there wouldn't have been a pilot amongst the crowd on the boats. It's not likely. 
the rebels had been here, I'd expect to find the plane damaged. My father killed, perhaps. But not this complete disappearance. That's what puzzles me. For the plane to be moved, it... Well, it means that someone capable of flying it must have been here. My father flew a little when he was young, you know, but oh, it was many years ago. Of course, I remember him telling me now. Well, then it's all right. He must have moved the kite himself. I still do not feel that it's all right. Why did he move it, and where to? I have no idea. There's nothing here to give us a clue. I don't like this, Lola. It's very dangerous for your father to fly a plane in his state. His legs are both badly hurt. He'd have no chance of using them quickly. Listen! A shooting! It's a machine gun. That could be the gun from the plane. Where's it coming from? Downstream. As I should say, more than a mile from here. It must be your father. No one else would start fighting with a machine gun. Let's find him, Lala. You know the district. See if you can make your way to that sound. Wait, Lala, there are the boats. But there were three of them before. One has been sunk. You can see it beyond the others. Yes, I... I can see the men clambering ashore. Your father must have sunk it with the machine gun. I can't see the plane anywhere. Well, the gun is not firing from the plane. The shots are coming from that point where the river bends sharply. I hope nothing's happened to him. Well, he's perfectly well to be shooting like that. But they're answering his fire from one of the boats. Oh, come, we must go to him and help. <laughs> It's not far from here. I think we shall find it near the edge of these trees. Quiet, Anna. There's someone else moving through them. Where? I see no one. A big gnarled tree about 20 feet ahead of us. There's a man hiding by it. Yes, there, look. He's moving forward again. And there's another. There are three of them. It's the men from the wrecked boat. They're sneaking down to kill your father. That is they who will be killed. Do you see any others? No. There only seem to be three. I'll take the men on the right. We'd better fire together. I shall attend to the one in the center. The other we must leave to chance. We'll try to get all of them. Are you ready? Yes. Fire. It's all right, Lala. The third one's bolting. He won't come back. Who the blazes is that? Keep your distance. My gun's trained into those trees. It's Lala and Miss, uh, Miss Kendall, father. Hold your fire and let us join you. All right. Quickly, my hands are full here. Oh, about time you showed up. What the dickens kept you so long? Shansi is ours. The rebels have left. Yes, I can see that. But nothing will be ours unless we do something about this confounded situation. What's going on? Where's the plane? Round the bend of the river, just below us. The other gun can't get in there. Now keep well down, both of you. Use this fallen tree for shelter. That bloke's just about got me set. Fire's coming close. But I, I still don't understand. What's going on? Well, isn't it obvious? Just a second, I, I don't let up. Or they'll move that gun closer. I'm trying to prevent those fellows from getting to Victoria Point. Saw them coming down the river, so I, I taxied along ahead of them and took up my position here. <laughs> I'm doing badly so far. But I want to sink the other boats, too. You mean you're doing this for us? trying to stop them from joining the main force. That's the idea. Everyone we can keep out of the big attack will help. But I don't know that one gun is enough. If I could just make sure of those boats. You're running out of ammunition, too. Did you bring up any more with you? Well, here's all I brought. Plenty more on the plane. I'll slip down and get some for you. We'll be in a frightful mess if we run out. Is there anything I can do, Father? My pistol is useless at this range. Oh, it's occurred to me there might be another gun at the house. If not a machine gun, perhaps a few rifles. Now, how do you feel about cutting back and seeing what you can find? Yes, of course. But will you be safe here by yourself? I won't be by myself. There's Miss Kendall, isn't there? <laughs> She's as useful as any man could be. Now off you go. Come back as quickly as you can. I 
I say, old trout, isn't that some sort of rumpus going on down there on the river? I can see smoke oozing upwards. Yes, by Jove, it's coming from those boats. Yes, it's a fight, definitely. Then I'll bet our dear old Patricia's involved in it. Really, old Bean, you should never let the old darling loose without a lissy tagging along. My dear boy, if you'd been with her, the rumpus would have been a downside worse. I say, look, there's the kite, too. Round the bend of the river from the boats. I say, it looks as if Pat's struck a snag, though. Well, I'll waft down and we'll have a deco at it from a reasonable height. Uh, no point in that, Bertie. Eh? We might land a bullet, and then both kites would be out of action. Uh, Shantz is just ahead. The landing field's beyond the bungalow there, by the river. Will it be safe to put down? I mean to say, if the belly thing was flooded recently, it might be most awfully gooey, what? Uh, it can't be too bad. There's no sign of the fighters that were there, so they must have taken off from it. But this old pantechnican's a jolly sight heavier than a fighter, by Jove. It must weigh at least a million tons. Well, no matter what it weighs, we're going down. Pat's in that mess, and we must pull her out of it. Right, old boy, bring her around. There's plenty of room for us. Like a billiard table, by Jove. If anything, the jolly old water did the surface good. There isn't a bump on the belly thing. All right, Betty, taxi into a position for a quick takeoff, will you? Possible we may have to leave again in a hurry. Sizzling sausages, I hadn't thought of that. Suppose the place is still held by the blinking rebels. We've sort of plumped ourselves right down in the middle of the blighters. I can't see anyone. My rifle's ready if the fun does start. All right, that should do us. Switch off and grab your gun, Betty. It may be rather sticky outside. Uh-oh. Uh, it's starting, old Bean. There's someone coming down from the house now. He whacked the old pea shooter into position. No, it's all right. It's Lella. Come on, let's go out to meet him. You'll be able to tell us what's happening along the river. My father sent me back for more guns, but there are none in the house. I'm so glad you've come, Inspector. You'll be able to help. I'm afraid we haven't any machine guns with us, but... Uh, Bertie and I brought rifles. There'll be some help. Is everyone well? I mean to say, uh, Pat and your old Peter, are they sort of battling on in fine fettle or pumping out the old lead with their last gasp sort of nonsense? Well, no one has been wounded, if that is what you mean. Or rather, there had not been when I left. But there are two boatloads of men on the river and a further party which have swum ashore. If we don't give them assistance quickly, my father and Miss Kendall may be killed. I see. Well, we'll go to them at once. But take us by way of some place where we can overlook the boats, Ella. I want to fully appreciate the situation before we move in. We're not far from the boats here. I do not understand it. It's no longer the sound of shooting. Well, if we're as close as that, we should hear something. It's growing so confoundedly dark, we'll find it difficult to see anything. I say, Albine. We must put an end to this stoush pretty soon, you know. It'll be frightfully confusing if we're all burbling round in circles through the jungle all night. I mean to say, no one will know who's after who, what? Oh, we'll do what we can, but we must know what the enemy's up to first. Um, Lala, tell us when we should see the boats, will you? Actually, we should see them from here. They must have moved since I left for the bungalow. Baked potatoes, I hope the blighters haven't converged on the jolly old machine gun nest. No, no, it's all right. I can see them. They're both pulled in close to the shore. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, that's what they've done. They've come ashore with those from the boat which was sunk. And that is why the fighting has stopped. They're out of sight of my father. It's hard to see what's going on, Suzanne. There are quite a few men standing about. You can see what's going on because um, well, there isn't anything, old Bean. The blight is just waffling about the place, smoking and yarning and doing absolutely nothing. I should say everything in the garden is positively lovely at the moment. I wonder... Doesn't seem to be any tension about those fellows. It's almost as if they're filling in time, waiting for something. You mean... I mean, I don't trust this quiet. Lala, lead us to the machine gun post. Perhaps your father and Pat will have some idea what's happening. Hold it. There's a movement in the jungle ahead. Perhaps it's Pat or Lala's Peter burbling about. We're not far from their position, but... It not be this distance from the river. There. It's down to the left, not far away either. By Jove, yes. There's someone stooging about. I think there's a whole parcel of sausages in there. 
I can see quite a bit of movement. Yes, it can only be the rebels, I'm afraid. And they're between us and the machine gun. They're planning to... That's their plan. They've brought their own machine gun down here and they're attacking our post in the rear. Through the gathering darkness, the machine gun spits flame from only a few yards in front of them. Can Pat and Marling withstand the fire? Will Biggles be able to save them? Listen for the next exciting chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles. Adventures of Biggles. When the big freight plane puts down on the Shansi landing field, Lala is there to meet it. He leads Biggles and Bertie to a point by the river a mile or two from the house, where Pat and Marling have been engaging a band of rebels. As they draw close to Marling's machine gun post, they notice a movement in the jungle ahead. Then a spatter of a machine gun betrays the enemy's strategy. A party of rebels have brought their machine gun close to Marling's post and are attacking him from the rear. My father and Miss Kendall are just beyond that gun, just firing at point-blank range. Baked potatoes! If there were only a few more of us. Don't worry, they're enough. We'll take them by surprise. Now, when I give the word, dive in quickly. You and Lala tackle anybody you see, but leave the gun for me. Shoot, hit, do what you like, but create as much confusion as possible. Can you take the gun alone? Don't worry, I'll do my best. Now, fight as hard as you can go until I give a yell. And when you hear that, get between the rebel gun and Marlins. I'll be turning the gun in this direction. All clear? Absolutely, I'll be. Mud was never clearer. I think I understand. Right, fight. Understand that and you'll be all right. Fight and keep clear of the gun. Now then, in you go. The gun's mine! Get back towards the river! Yell when you're right! Missy is right behind you, uh, old trout! Lella! Where the places are you? To your left! I, I cannot fight my way through! All right, I'll keep clear of you! Don't come this way! You've skittled them, Albine! Send him a six. We'll pelt in a few more rounds. Make sure of it. I think that's frightened them off for the moment anyway. Now, where's Lala? I'm with you. I was fighting when you called, but the man released me very quickly when the shooting started. Frightened the belly daylights out of them. That's what you did, Albine. They still don't know what struck them. Yeah, so they may wake up in a minute. We must get Pat and Marling clear before they do. Sizzling sausages. That's their gun. They're firing on us. Go to ground. This is point blank range. Father, father, it is Lala. Lala and... Uh, it's no use yelling over the gun. They'll never hear you. Wait for a break. For Pete's sake, hold your fire. This is Bigglesworth. There are no rebels here. Bigglesworth, what the blaze is going on? Come forward so we can see you. Scarcely the trusting type, the jolly old major. What? One cannot be too trusting in the jungle. It is too easy to play a trick. Yes. Oh, it's all right, Marling. There's no trick. It really is us. Well, let me see. Growing so confoundedly dark. I told you it was all right, Major. I recognized Biggles' voice. Well, what the dickens was the shooting about? You nearly skittled us. Why in heaven's name didn't you check before firing in this direction? You knew we were here, Lala. Now, wait, Father. Allow us to explain. That was the rebel shooting. Yes, we were behind them when they opened fire, so we hopped in and took over the gun. Now, that rather disconcerted the sausages, so they sort of tootled off. 
<laughs> Actually, Balzdyke Billiard. Thank goodness you were there. They caught us quite unprepared. Well, by Jove, yes. When the fire stopped from upriver, we relaxed. The previous hour or two had been rather severe. We didn't check on our ammunition. Inevitably, when we were attacked from close quarters, we found the gun was empty. We had to rush down to the plane to replenish. And we um, landed the jolly old replenishment, what? Naturally, we thought the rebels were still there, so we opened fire at once. Oh, I'm so glad no one was hurt. Oh, we're all jolly lucky to be alive. And with the rebels in the jungle, we'd better make ourselves scarce while the luck holds good. Now, come, Father. You must need rest after all your exertions. Chancy is ours again, so you'll relax in comfort. Hmm. Well, I, I suppose so. But I'm hanged if I like to go. Those swine are still at large. My idea in coming here in the first place was to stop them getting away. That was in daylight, Major. Hmm. I don't think we can do anything now it's dark. I've been chewing over this scheme of the Majors as... There's something to be said for keeping the rebels away from Victoria Point. Has the latter told you about the projected invasion of Dolphin Island? Yes. Yes, I believe we're to be hit with every egg in Fire Tox basket. Uh, frankly, I'm not looking forward to it. Precisely. And these 20 or 30 chaps up the river will be 20 or 30 less if we can prevent them joining the main force. I, uh, I don't feel like letting them through. But what can we do, Father? There are so few of us. But we have a couple of perfectly good pop guns, by Jove. What's to stop us bringing those into play? We saw where the blighters had beached their boats. We could play their own belly trick on them. Bring the old pea shooters into position behind them, cover them with two flanks, and then let fly. We'd make the most glorious mess. Yes, perhaps we could, but um, it'd be cold-blooded murder, and I'm not very keen on that. They had no such feelings when they attacked Chansey. Uh, while I'm perfectly willing to kill in fair fight, I dislike slaughter for its own sake. Uh, there must be some other way of holding these men. Lella, are there any of our fellows back at the homestead? I saw only Ahmad, the cook. He told me that many of the natives were hiding in the jungle, so I ordered him to assemble as many as he could find and to have them return. By now, I should think there should be several there. Well, then there's no reason why we shouldn't take these rebels prisoner. Would you agree to that, Bigglesworth? Yes, certainly. But is it practicable? You couldn't hold them indefinitely at Shansi. No, and I shouldn't care to do that. But I can hold them for a time... There's a large shed near the bungalow. We can lock them in there and hold them until the government patrol comes to pick them up. I don't think there were any government troops in the district. Uh, there was some station about 80 miles in the north. It's not a large force, but it's uh, used to police the border districts of the rebel territory. If I sent a messenger to them, I'm sure they'd risk sending... Well, sending down a patrol with such a rich bag of prisoners as this. At any rate, I'm willing to try it. All right. That's the plan we'll settle for, Major. Bad dear. You join Pat and Major Marling on this gun. Take it to a position as close as you can to the boats, but on this side. And Lala and I will take the other gun and cover them from upriver. Mm. Uh, uh, will there be any shooting at all? Yes, I think there'd better be some to impress them that we mean business. Yes. Anyway, you hold your fire until you hear from us. Right. As soon as we're in position, we'll send in a couple of bursts, and you can do the same. And then we'll both hold our fire, and I'll have Lala call on them to surrender. Uh, I, I speak their lingo. So I'll do the same to those close to our gun. Right, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. If they're sensible, we'll force them to lay down their arms and move into a solid block. Oh. Then our two parties can join forces and we'll march them up to the shed. Any queries? It's a lovely scheme, old trout. Most frightfully neat and tidy. I only hope the jolly old rebels see it in the same light. Yeah, they probably won't, but I'm afraid we can't deal with emergencies until they happen. All right, now let's get cracking on it. It'll be pitch dark soon. I want to be back at Dolphin Island sometime tonight. Day, you call it. We've really burnt through the landing strip with the flares we put out for you. What on earth kept you until after dark? Uh, something cropped up just after you left. There was a phone call. Oh, tell me about it later. Biggles is over on the mainland in Bertie's kite, so you'd better move to give him landing room. Once you're organised, you can join me in the bungalow. Roger. I'll put the loaders to work as soon as I'm in place. Then I'll be with you. Now, what's all this about a phone call? Uh, it was Raymond. I was talking to the RAF station's commander in his office when word came through that Scotland Yard was calling, so, well, I thought I'd better wait. I should think so. What did he want? He'd heard of some of the strife we'd been in and was worrying about us. Hmm. He was worrying. How does he think we feel about it? <laughs> Don't worry, I gave him all that. 
I told him this job should be handled by a civil airline, guarded by a navy, an army, and an air force. I didn't pull my punches either. Good man. Did it cut any ice? Not a bit. He was very sympathetic, of course, and said he'd pass on my information to His Majesty's government. But he couldn't promise any help at all. Oh, we're still on our own, eh? Now, if you ask me, Jins, the Bidens just aren't interested in us. They don't care what happens out here. Oh, yes, they do. Raymond congratulated us on the amount of rubber we've moved, and he told me that the government is most concerned that we should clear it all, leave none of it to fall into foreign hands. Hmm. How's their form? No help, but we mustn't let a foreign country grab the rubber. And we mustn't start trouble ourselves. On that point, he was most insistent. Would you believe it? He even thinks we went too far in pinching the Sumatran and raiding Victoria Point. In future, we're allowed to take defensive action, but we mustn't, under any circumstances, launch an attack of our own. <laughs> well, I disagreed with him, uh, so is it any wonder I'm late getting in? Well, it seems to me we're being left right out in a limb, Ginge. Biggles is over on the mainland somewhere with Bertie and Pat. No one knows what's happening to him, and no one cares two hoots. Say, there are the boats down there, Lala. And where are the rebels? You see any movement? Oh, none at all. I've been expecting to hear the voices, but there's been no sound. Only the rustle of the jungle. Yeah, I'm afraid we've left it too late. They must have decided to leave their boats and cut back cross country. Oh, well. Let's find your father and the others and tell them the fight's off. Our idea of capturing this gang is a good one. <coughs> Suffering cats! It's another gun! They've not waited for our signal. They aren't firing an attack. They're defending themselves. There are rifles down there, too. The rebels must have ambushed them. An ambush could easily turn the tables on Biggles' small force. What has happened with the other party? Will this skirmish with the rebels end in disaster? Listen for the next thrilling chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles. After capturing the rebel machine gun and joining with Marling and Pat, Biggles decides to use both guns in an attempt to make the rebels his prisoners. It's quite dark as he and Lala carry their gun into position. But it's obvious that the rebels are not by their boats as Biggles expected. He's trying to decide what has become of them when there's a sudden hideous din of both machine gun and rifle fire from the other gun position. They've been ambushed. But surely the rebels did not expect our attack. Why not? Someone must have stayed to spy on us and moved ahead when we came up here. Only the party they tagged was your father. Well, we must go to them. If they're attacked by the entire force, they cannot hold off 20 or 30 of them. Oh, I know. Come along, hoist up the gun again and we'll move across. Our crowd is through to the right. This position will have to do. Could we not move inland a little? Then we shall do more damage with the gun. Well, then perhaps kill our own people or be killed by them. No, we'll have to shoot from an angle where we are. Now, quickly, let's set up the gun here. I cannot see what good we shall do. Where are the rebels? We cannot see them. How shall we know where to fire? Once we fire, we'll know where they are. That in itself will be of some use. It will draw some of them away from the other gun. There. 
Well, she's right now. Have the ammunition ready. Here they come, lad up. We've drawn some of them off. Keep low or you'll collect a bullet. No, I'm confused. Just fighting in the darkness. They're trying to cut in from the right. Use your rifle. Hurry, man. That's the way. Now keep shooting. Whenever you see a movement, let's try. It'll be a muddle for a while, but eventually we'll make our way through to the others. Major Marling, are you hit? No. No, it's all right, my dear. I'm feeling rather faint. Not quite fit enough for this. If you two sausages don't keep your belly heads down, you'll be even less fit. Can you bring those rifles into play again? I'll have to leave it to you two, I'm afraid. We'll get back to the fight, miss. You mustn't let them overwhelm us. We won't. Right. Now that the other gun's operating, we'll beat them off. Where do you need the fire, Bertie? Straight ahead, old dear. Despite Biggles coming in, the blighters haven't let up. I don't know if we can hold them. Of course we will. Once Biggles can bring his gun through to us, we'll cut them to pieces. Well, for the moment, see what you can do with the old rifle, what? I'd hate the old sausage to find us in pieces when he does barge through. Inspector, can we not move closer to them? If we could band the guns together, our fire would be more deadly. Yes, that's what I'm aiming for. But I'm trying to thin out the rebels first. We push through now, we may lose everything. If anything should happen before we reach the other party... Have another belt of ammunition ready, will you? This one's nearly through. Inspector, the ammunition is finished. We've used every belt. What? No, of course we didn't bring enough for a fight like this. Oh, what shall we do? Without the machine gun, we're helpless. Well, there we are. Last round gone. We have no gun. There are so many of the rebels, the others will have no chance. Inspector, we must rush through to them. Come quickly. Stay where you are. We're in a spot, but wild schemes won't help us. My father is through there. I'm going to him. You do as you like, but I'm going to my father. Lella! Lella, come back, you idiot. Look out, boy, they're rushing you. Bertie, hold your fire for a second. I'm holding my belly thumbs on the trigger, old darling, and they're not coming on. But the rebels' fire seems to have stopped. You'll break for a second, we can make sure. Oh, well, that's different. If the trout's are sizzling sausages, what's all that racket? It, it must be Bigglesworth and Lala. No, no, it can't be. Their guns stopped firing. All the shooting stopped. And from the sound of those belly yelps, I'd say someone's being murdered. Not only that, the, the blight is a sort of oozing away from here. Notice that. Must be Biggles. But, but without the machine gun, well... I don't see how they can be causing Hello all that... Hello there. Everything in order here? Oh, yes, perfectly. But what's going on through there? We thought you and Lala were committing mayhem. Yes, Lala may be accounting some of it, but mostly it's your natives, the workers from Shanti. What? My folk? How the dickens did they come into it? Actually, I'm not too sure myself. You see, our gun ran out of ammunition and Lala tried to rush through to you. And just as I thought he'd be cut down, a team of natives tore through the jungle like madmen. Oh, when the rebels saw them, their fight collapsed and they bolted. Oh, Lala with them, eh? Good for the old sausage. Yes, um, he said he'd see you in the bungalow, Marling. Oh, frankly, old man, I shan't be sorry to go down there either. I'm absolutely done in. And his parting shot was that we weren't to worry about the rebels. There'd be none left to take prisoner. Oh, well, shall we make our way up top? There is not one of them still alive, I can guarantee it. Our men had been ill-treated and they remembered it. They were delighted at the chance to revenge themselves. Oh, uh, what brought them into it in the first place? It was old Armit. I told him that we were fighting by the river, so when he collected our people from the jungle, he sent all those who were armed to assist us. He'll be rewarded for this. He saved our lives. Well, what do you think, Marling? Can you handle your own defences from now on? Well, I'll do my best, old man, but I, I can't be foolhardy and try to handle everything by myself. I'm officially under the protection of the local government, so first thing tomorrow morning I'll send a messenger to their nearest post and ask for assistance. Yes, my dear, wise plan. I think the time's come for that. I'll be doing the same with the British government. If this rubber is to be moved, we must have all assistance. 
Well, what are you going to do about mine? There's still a big load of it here at Chansey, you know. I'll have it picked up as soon as I can. And will you be standing by for the freight planes? Oh, certainly. Once I've had some sleep, my brain will be clear, and I'll uh, I'll set about organizing my natives. Yes, by Joe, we all need sleep. Um, Bertie, you and Pat can take back the Bristol. I'll follow you in the Gosling. Now, when you reach the island, tell everyone to stop worrying and turn in, will you? And first thing in the morning, we're going to have a conference. And on that conference will depend our future and the future of the rubber. want to back out of a scrap, but if the rebels are sending their entire force against us, we might as well give up. To blazes with that. We're all alive and perfectly well. I don't reckon we should throw in the towel while ever we've kites and men to fly them with. But hang it all, Ginge. There's no defence. A handful of rifles and machine guns is no protection against a thousand men. Things looked tough when you first started this operation, didn't they, Biggles? Yes, they certainly did. And you've managed to shift a fair bit of rubber, haven't you? And now that lie has left with the second shipload, over three parts of it have gone... That applies to the rubber on the island. Of course, there's still the shansi pile to clear. All right, then. If you've moved so much against odds, I vote we carry on. What's to say we won't pull through this attack, too? The size of it. The forces we've been up against so far were mere handfuls oh. beside this team. And still, tug votes with Ginge to carry on. And um, what do you say about him? Well, can't say we listen have thought much about it, old trout. But there isn't actually any question, is there? I mean to say, while there's still rubber here, we sort of just burble on with shifting the belly stuff. A few billion rebels don't make much difference to us lissies, you know. Cuckoo. Absolutely cuckoo. What's that? Hmm. Um, Pat? Well, I'd been rather hoping we'd forestall the attack. Something like the raid on Victoria Point the other night. Afraid I've no concrete plan. Oh, you can forget that one, Pat. When I spoke to Raymond from Singapore, he was quite definite that all future raiding was out. We can defend ourselves, but nothing else. Hmm. But there's nothing to defend with. That's the point of it. If we could load up with bombs and drop them on the rebels, either before or during the attack, we'd be right. But to sit here meekly and wait for it, I think we'd be crazy. What's your uh, own opinion, Biggles? Well, um, actually, my course is halfway between all those that have been suggested. I feel the time has come when the government must help. Uh, some loaded kites, aren't there? Yes, tugs, gingers and mine are all ready to take off. Right, then take them down at once. Now, when you reach Singapore, Alger, put a call through to Raymond and insist that we have protection. The government isn't prepared to give it. Ask permission for us to finalise the operation with the last load of rubber to leave before the attack eventuates. Clear? That's the scheme, Biggles. If we have protection, we can carry on against any odds. And I'll make darn sure we get it. This time, Raymond can't let us down. That's right, sir. The rebels are going to take the island as soon as they've assembled their full force. It may amount to thousands. But I've already told you we can't hold this one off. If we could have some ships, even a few kite loads of bombs. Ah, the government's quite determined about that. I see. Very well, sir. Biggles instructed me that uh, if you wouldn't promise help, I was to ask permission to call off the operation. What? But hang it all, we can't carry on. You'll lose your rubber anyway, and we'll all be killed. I see. Yes, sir, I'll tell Biggles where to carry on. We can count on nothing except annihilation. <laughs> Algie miserably replaces the phone and wanders out to his plane. What can Beagles do when he hears this news? Will the defenders of the island really be wiped out? Listen again to the excitement in the next chapter of The Air Adventures of Beagles. <laughs> <laughs>